What's happening? Welcome to another edition of the best show that's on the YouTubes, Charlie. It's rated number one, The Vape <laughs> Hot Tub. With me, as always, the ever sensuous, ever sexy, ever loving. That's me, Hunky Charlie. Hunky Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? What's going on? Did you unmute the show? Yeah, we're unmuted. We're completely unmuted. Wow. Flawless entry. Oh. Oh man, just another day. Things have been crazy at work. Things Happy to be here in the hot tub relaxing. Uh, you know what, man? There is nothing better after a long day than jumping in the hot tub with another guy. That's right. Absolutely. Charlie, you know, this is our last episode where it's just you and I. We're, we're, we're going to share the hot tub experience with other people moving forward. What do you think about that? Yeah. I, I think that's amazing. We have a special guest next week. We do have a special guest. We have, uh, she's, a, she's a married young lady. Do you know that? I did know that. I, I know her husband. You know her husband? He's Don't tell him. He's a big guy. He's a big guy? Yeah. Don't tell him. I won't well, say a word. Don't, we'll keep her here in the hot tub. Keep, keep what, what happens in the hot tub, Charlie, we <laughs> need it to stay in the hot tub. That's exactly right. <laughs> So next week, uh, we will have a very, very special guest. I'm super excited. We will have Brittany, or one of the Vape Wives, um, uh, as our very special first inaugural guest on the Vape Hot Tub. We're hoping to uh, – really excited. I, I love Brittany. She's hilarious, and I think she's going to have a good time. I, I talked to her today, and you know what she asked me? <laughs> what she asked you? She, she, she asked me if she could cuss on the show. I was like, fuck yeah, you can. As much yeah. as you want. Shit, fuck, cock. You can say whatever you want, man. Don't matter to me. That's right. <laughs> we are uncensored in this hot tub. Hot tub, yeah. I was like, I told her, I was like, pants are not required. They, <laughs> they are forbidden. Yeah, and they're not even allowed. You get your pants off before you get in the hot tub. <laughs> so that will be next week. I'm looking forward to that. We're taking the show. You know, we've had, uh, we've had a good time. I think we've kind of got the format down uh, between you and I. And now we can open it up a little bit and uh, and bring the show to full full throttle and i made yeah. some changes on my computer if you notice on my I background did. you notice that charlie is there a reason for that scott i turned that off that was at your suggestion i turned <laughs> that off and now my computer does not drop every five minutes during the show so i think that i figured out how to use this computer and be able to host more than one person on in the hot tub so it's like a win-win. Amazing. Win. Amazing what happens when you listen to me, Scott. When I listen to you, Charlie, that's the most important thing in life, but that's what I'm learning. Because <laughs> if I listen to you, then things will go ever so smoothly. So how was your day? Did you have a nap today? Uh, yes, I did. I did have a nap. I uh, we, I got at my normal time, went to work, um, and uh, it started snowing like a blizzard outside. And where I live is north of, of the city I work in, and we we're getting a ton of snow. So I took off around noon to come home and work from home, which ended up being a, a, a nice little nap. The wife and I took a little nap. She was home today as well. Man, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, how about my you, day, man? I, I work from home, and I really have to work from home. So Yo. my day's been hellacious. I've got a big deadline coming up at work and phone calls nonstop. And you are in the adult entertainment industry. Is that is that correct? You're a producer uh, of adult films? Really? Is that what you do, Charlie? No. You got me mixed up with somebody else. I, I, I thought you mentioned to me that you oh, had <laughs> that you had Blondes and Boners 3 set for <laughs> debut next week. So. Scott, what happens in my bedroom is my business. <laughs> that does sound like a great day for a movie, though. Blondes and Boners. damn it. <laughs> Never met a Punky Charlie. Punky, that you goddamn right. How do you think you got that nickname, man? That's right. Punky Char <laughs> All right. Well, hey, it's great to see everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us Thursday. And you know on Thursday we get in the hot tub and have a great time. Charlie, what do you uh, got anything new this week that came in? Something you want to talk about, show off? Uh, yeah. I got um, I got the Arden in. Um, it it may have, I don't think, I think it came in the day after the hot tub. I know I wasn't, I didn't build it last week. Um, Is that on the Dreamer? You got it on the stack Dreamer? Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll go over it a little more later in the show, but the Ardent um, hybrids onto the, onto the Dreamer mech and freaking 
fits, I mean, perfect seamlessly. I got stainless just because I wanted it to match um, some of my regulated mods that I'm going to run it on. Yeah. But they had a copper one too that was freaking gorgeous. They, have a co- got- they actually have a copper. Did, did he do like copper and brass and all that? Yeah. And every, um, the cool thing is every one of the different coatings, um, it's the top cap, but the deck is the same. The deck is a nice stainless deck with a uh, copper 510 pin through it. It's hybrid. Nice. Uh, and it also has a 510 connection. So nice. I'll have to um... colors soon, but he has a bunch of them up right now. I'm going to, I stopped using, you know, the dreamer mech mod is a fucking fantastic mod. I mean, mm-hmm. I think for the price point, it's literally one of the best mechs you can buy. Yeah, I think so too. Without question. I, um, and I haven't used my, I haven't been using my mechs lately cause I just been using my squonks, but I think I'm going to get an art. I think I'll do a review on it and get one and do one set, set it for next week. How much are they're like 30, are they like 36, 37 the bucks? The problem you may run into is if they're sold out. They're they're 40 bucks, but there was a discount code also. So yeah, 38, 37 bucks, something like that. Okay. And and you and they're only on they're on his site? Yeah, I think they may be popping up on some other sites because um I'm pretty sure he mentioned that uh, some companies bought wholesale, but they're only at um on Stan's site right now. Okay. I'll as have to look as, for them. Anyone in chat know if the Arden is available um, anywhere besides Stan site? I'm going to have to wait anyway till the beginning of next month. Yeah. When I get money in. Because I, I really don't have money for it right now. Yeah. But yeah, I'll be looking. I think uh, D-Bone just said they're 40 bucks. Here, let me change over to live chat so I can see everybody. All right. So, so- Kate Nicole, the um, she just said I need a Dreamer and Copper. I highly recommend it. Um. I was a little concerned about it because of the smell and um, the penny smell and getting tarnished. But man, I've been vaping this thing nonstop for over a month, basically since November. And it still looks pretty good. You haven't cleaned it or anything? That's just how it looks right now? Yep. That's pretty amazing, man. I bought one of the jigs for the drill from Stan when I bought it, but I just have been lazy. The... um. You know, I, I I typically go with stainless. Just that's just kind of what I buy. But you know, if you look at the 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 ranks of metal, copper's at the top. Well, silver's at the top of that. But then copper for anything you can buy, and then uh, stainless is at the bottom. So if you really want yeah. a true mech experience, that stacked copper dreamer right there has got to hit like a truck. It does. It's a freaking beast. I vape what? six milligrams, and I've got to I've got to start vaping three milligrams during some of the uh, some of the vape shows that have gongs because I get really <laughs> nicked out. <laughs> what build do you have in there? Um, series point uh, point three one alien. Uh, I'm running J boy coils that I bought on sale half price in here right now because my black cat series coils have not arrived yet. Yes, you need some black cat series coils. Yeah. Yeah, I, I made some for uh for John and I I did uh I, I made two round wire and one square wire in the middle. Ooh. And he said he really liked them. So that sounds like a banger. Yeah, he said he really liked them. And and they're um you know, anytime you put square wire in a build, I'm telling you, it, it just takes it for me, it, it takes the flavor up a notch. It really, really does. And I actually did a show. If you remember the show I did where I did the um, add flavor to your alien coil when you put that in there, mm-hmm. but I couldn't do three just because it would have been too uh, too low of ohms. So I had yeah. to kind of mesh, I had to mix it up a little bit to get, yeah, to, get to that. That's the level. tough part with the um, with the stacked mods is you've got to have coils that it, reach up to those ohms. And so many coils that people buy now are just su- stupid low, and it, you really got to find a pair of series above a point three. You got to have a big enough deck on the RDA. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're going to throw, you know, you could, and I think it's why a lot of people stick with uh, Fuse Claptons for series builds, just yeah. because they're not really that big and you can get That's eight right. or nine wraps on it. Because some know? of these aliens, you're looking at 10 to 12, some of them are even 13 wrap series builds that people are running. That's and, 
<laughs> that that honestly, that's ridiculous. Like I'm not gonna run. And that I know the money shot RDA, the posts are so damn far apart. That's one thing reason I don't like it. But you could yeah. literally put like a twenty. You could probably put a series twenty eight gauge alien series in there. Just yeah. Do like you'd have to do probably ten to twelve wraps, and it right. would fit because that RDA is so damn big. And the other thing with stacks that um, Heavy was spot on about when he and I were talking about stacks, because this is my first stack 21700 mod, you've got to have a lot of airflow because this stack hits so hard, you're just doing short, quick, really heavy pulls. Yeah. So you need an RDA that you can fit those series coils in and something with a lot of airflow. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the that's challenge of finding an RDA that works in series. You know what I mean? It's some it, it, you, you, Not all of them do right and now that i'm vaping series on my dna mods i've gone on uh one of my drippers i was running about 90 95 watts um after it was the i think the goon after running it on my stack for a little while i'm vaping at 200 watts now really (laughs) so you've got like a taste for that yeah my my pull has changed from a long drawn out pull to a a really heavy short pull a couple seconds that's how i vape too yeah. Quick, yeah, that's how I vape too. I like it. I, I mean, I typically, I, I alternate because if I use a single, if I'm using like a single 22 millimeter RDA, you really can't vape that way. I'll say though, on the Jenna, you can. You can vape hot, va- hot uh, builds in the Jenna. Yeah. There's enough airflow in it, but most 22 millimeters, there's not enough airflow to vape that way. The um, uh, the aliens that you sent me in the Jenna mm-hmm. were probably the ugliest aliens I've seen, and they freaking vape amazing. I, I vape only my <laughs> blems. Yeah. yeah, and I messed up, and the one, the ones, the one in there, I had messed yeah. up because I had actually pushed on it, and it like bent in. Did yeah. you notice that? Yeah, it didn't look it's, like that when I originally installed it. I fucked it up. Shape. It almost looks like those oval coils that yeah. are all twisted. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be. Like most but people I, would be embarrassed to send that out. I was like, this fucking thing vapes fantastic. It does. I'm running it at somewhere between 65 and 80 watts. It depends on my mood. Charlie, I only vape my blems, and I'm telling you right now, inconsistent wraps on aliens, like spaced out together, spaced out, all fucked up. Even if they're, even if the bends are turned the wrong way, vape mm-hmm. better than like perfect aliens. Yeah. They do. This, this is shocked me. Everybody. Yeah, I mean they're a little spitty, but they vape. I think they vape well, fantastic. I appreciate you leaving them in there for me. I yeah, I, I tried to clean it up a little bit before I sent you. I actually had a little thing where I was taking it apart and I pushed on it. On accident, when I was taking it off, I had my thumb in there and I pushed it in. So I tried to fix it up a little bit before I sent it back. <laughs> I straightened it out a little. Right on. And I right sanitized on. it. All right. So what do we got in the news this week, Charlie? Any any funny, strange news we can talk about? Uh, we've we've had quite quite a few funny stories this week. Have we really? About a couple of them. Freaking 15 minutes into the show already. Let's see. So <laughs> one of my funny stories was... Um, a dishwasher at a hotel was awarded $21 million for having to work on Sundays. <laughs> $21 million. She took her company, to, the company that she worked for, she took them to court because her boss made her work on Sundays and she argued that it was against her religious freedom. And she got $21 and million for that? No one decided the damages were worth $21 million. Okay, so wait a minute. So first off, Nothing against dishwashers, because I, I actually like washing dishes. I do. That's like one of my favorite chores. I don't know what it's just because I know that they're super like I'm a I'm a clean like I'm kind of a germaphobe. Yeah. So I, I like washing dishes. But let me tell you something. It, it sucks when you get a little dried food on a clean plate. And you're like, man, someone's not in my watch fucking it. house you won't, Charlie. God damn it. <laughs> I guarantee you won't that won't happen in my house when you have dinner. That plate'll be clean as shit. You could perform you could perform surgery on my plates if you want. <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you something. When you take a job as a dishwasher, you're kind of at the mercy of your employer. You don't really have much. Uh, you don't have much negotiation like leeway. You right. can't be like, "Hold on, pal. Hold yeah. on. I'm not yeah. taking that offer. You're gonna kick right. that up. You want me to put suds on them dishes? You're gonna have to kick up that offer, pal. Right. Yeah. That's exactly right. You don't have a lot of bargaining power. You're you're pretty much at the mercy. So you're telling me that they made her work on Sunday because. People do need their dishes washed on Sunday, Charlie. Just because it's Sunday doesn't mean people aren't going to eat. <laughs> Apparently, people shouldn't eat at that restaurant. <laughs> right, right. That's and that's actually probably one of their busiest days. And she won twenty. What state? This had to be California. Was it California? No, nope. nope, it wasn't California. Surprisingly, it was in Miami, in Miami, Florida. In Miami. 
Yeah. God, they lost their fucking mind down there. They have lost their fucking the, mind. Uh, at the Conrad Miami Hotel. Get, do you know any detail? Can you give me some more? De- I'm like starting to get a little bit like angry <laughs> here. Can you give me more details? Because this business, I'm assuming it's a restaurant. It's probably not yes. a chain. It's probably like somebody owns that restaurant and they get this fucking asshole who sued them for $21 million and just probably shut their business down completely. Um. So it says, um, Marie Jean Pierre, who worked as a dishwasher at the, at the Conrad Miami, sued... Virginia-based Park Hotels and Resorts, formerly known as Hilton, in 2017 for violation of the Civil Rights Act. The award was filed on Tuesday with district court. The jury also found she was due $35,000 in back wages and $500,000 for emotional pain and mental anguish. So apparently she started in 2009, kind of started this suit, um, and in 2015, in an effort to pers- persuade her not to quit, they accommodated her request and she didn't have to work on Sundays. So I guess this was for 2009 through 2015. And she was like, damn it, you you waited too long to tell me I could have Sundays off. So she got, so, okay, now I'm hearing $500,000 plus $35,000. Where right. does the $21 million come from? The jury was unaware that the law caps the amount of punitive damages she could receive. So the jury actually decided that that was worth 21 million. So 12 of her peers in Miami decided that working on Sundays was worth 21.5 million, apparently. Holy shit. <laughs> yep. Wow, that's unbelievable. But wait, she asked for 50 million. Fifty million dollars? <laughs> he only gave her twenty one and a half million. Okay, that there's got to be something behind that. There's yeah. got to be some. They've had to have like discriminated against her or something. Like, yeah, there's got to be so, something more to it. Like yeah. maybe they said like fuck your religion or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying that's worth twenty one million, but I'm saying <laughs> maybe they did something against her. Like I don't know. And that way, but I can't fucking believe that. That's ridiculous. Wow. It could be one of those cases, Scott, where it's a big company she's working for and, and something like that happened and the jury said they really need to learn a lesson here. You, you give them a million dollars, they'll never blink twice if you reward them a million dollars. But $21.5 million, that's gonna it's going to work its way up the chain and somebody's going to find out and make some change. You said they were formerly Hilton? Yeah. Maybe they saw the Paris Hilton sex tape. <laughs> <laughs> That was fucking awful. <laughs> you ever seen the Paris Hilton sex tape, Charlie? No, I would never watch something never like that. Scott. No, I've seen bits and pieces of it. Bits, bits and, pieces. and pieces. Something <laughs> weird about like a celebrity being on a sex tape with a penis in their mouth is just—it's weird. It's really and weird. pretending it's a surprise. I, you know, it doesn't surprise me that people have sex now. <laughs> it's a surprise that she acted like she didn't want that to come out. That's what the surprise yeah. was. It's just like, come on, you knew that would boost your career. I yeah, I like right. how every celebrity starts a little downhill slope and then boom, a sex tape magically sex tape. Gets leaked. Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for the, uh, Ur- the Ernest Board Nine sex tape. It's really gonna ju- rocket his career into the 21st that's century. That's kind of how. That's I mean, that's kind of how Congress and the media works too. You know, if people start to get a little bored with the investigation, some text messages get leaked from some congressman's office, and it's back in the news again. Yeah, it's like House of Cards, basically in real yeah. life. Great. Just waiting on the Stormy Daniels tape to come out because that's kind of dropped off a little. Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> I hope that doesn't come oh, out. There's not one, right? That will be that because you know. Okay, so I hate to say it that if there is a sex tape, like if there was, I mean, I would watch some and see what it was. <laughs> I don't think I want to see. I don't want that image in my mind. You would watch the Donald for a few minutes, is I, what you're saying? I think that wouldn't you? Like you'd want to <laughs> see, like what the fuck. I don't watch adult content like that, Scott. You work in the porn industry, Charlie. No, I'm a white conservative male. Thank you. You're a white conservative male. Jesus. Holy That's shit. Hard. This show just took a turn. <laughs> you you, 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 you work in the porn industry, Charlie. It's to stop fronting. We know this. You are an adult film star. I know it. I'll prove it. I'm, I'm scouring Pornhub <laughs> at the moment with an image search looking for you. Yep. Yeah, no sex tape here. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, shit. Any more? So we got this crazy uh, hotel worker. Well, good for her. She ain't going to have to work another day in her life. That's for damn sure. What's going? Anything else you got going over there on the news desk? I like how you managed to bring sex into the dishwasher story. Funny enough, my next story is... You, bring uh, you got another one? Cool content. Yeah. Oh. Did you hear about the submarine captain? Submarine captain. Yeah, he just got relieved of his duties or fired. And like U.S. Yesterday. submarine captain? Is he U.S. Yeah. commander? He's U.S. Navy. U.S. Navy. Okay, he got relieved of his duties. Yep. Did he, did he hijack a, a sub and try to take it over to the Russia or something like that? Like a hunt for Red October? No, funny enough, nothing like that. It, it would be really funny, though, if they caught him sneaking a sub to Russia. That's not yeah, funny, so, Charlie. Um, That's not funny so at all. You have to get Alec Baldwin to go get his ass. But that he wasn't terrifying. even in the sub when he got fired. He wasn't in the sub? Nope. He How wasn't he... even in the water. He wasn't in the water? Oh, he actually got fired because he he hired 10 prostitutes. He hired <laughs> 10? While docked in the Philippines. How many penises does this man have? Why does he need <laughs> 10 prostitutes? I wonder if it was like a, like Costco or something that you could just get ten for the price of one. It was in the Philippines. Yep. Were, did, were they? Did they work for Vicious Ant by chance? Does anybody know this? Has that been verified? <laughs> he might have been partying with Vicious Ant. He could have been. Those guys party like rock stars. Yeah, I heard. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. He's found with a titanium white mod. Hayes yeah. one. <laughs> then Gonna have to him. watch the Jay Hayes videos and see if it looks like he took his he green screened the shop and took it to the Philippines. Dude, so this this guy was he was uh, he's on a mission, mission critical. He's on a mission. Right. Philippines. Yeah. He drove down there on the submarine and then he got off and for his activity for the day, he decided to hire <laughs> 10 prostitutes. Apparently. Like and what got him is someone ratted him out. Right. One of his subordinates. Yeah. One of his it, subordinates ratted him out. Probably one of those deals where the guy who wanted to be captain was like, "Now nah, I got some shit on you." Yeah. <laughs> so he, they were having a, apparently they were at the pool chilling out, um, docked in the Philippines. And he mentioned to his subordinate that he um, hired almost a dozen hookers. And I'm sure his subordinate was like, yeah, whatever, you're drunk, shut up, kind of a thing. <laughs> and then I got to read the way they phrased it on here. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> That's a, okay. Wait a minute. What do you need ten prostitutes for? I don't get this. That is <laughs> like not? that's insane. Now, okay. So I'm going to argue this the other side. Saying. I'm going to argue the other side of this. What in his free time? What is it their business? What he does in his free time? First off, is prostitution illegal in Philippines? I would assume it is. They're like a and predominantly Christian type uh, c- country. It should, yeah, it should be. So I would assume take- that prostitution is illegal there. Right. But so, how is that again? Like, how can they fire him from his job? And I, and the whole on duty, off duty thing comes into play. And I don't know if you're, I, you would think a sub commander is not on duty when he's in a hotel or in a hotel room because it's not like he's got to drive the freaking ship. But somebody's also got to keep the, all the other guys in line, I guess. So he was supposed to be the responsible one. But it says, listen to this. Um, Captain Travis Zettel blabbed to two other sailors at a hotel pool in the Philippines that he hired nearly a dozen prostitutes on March 1st. The, the Kitsap Sun reported citing documents recovered through a Freedom of Information Act request. Freedom of Information Act. Yep. <laughs> later, later that night, a sailor saw Zettel with 10 provocatively dressed females outside the front door of the hotel. <laughs> and just hanging out, just walking around with ten prostitutes. This guy's another, awesome. That's hilarious. That's hysterical. Another sailor whose name was not released was also seen with three local females holding on to his arm as he was wandering around. That's fantastic. They, they like went bowling. He like went bowling with ten prostitutes. He's like, out yeah, there. they probably were just like came back from the Uber and someone saw him hanging out. They were probably vaping out in front of the hotel. They might have been vaping. Probably vicious hand. They probably had some vicious hand gear. Yeah, rocking it. Okay, so first off, that's hilarious. First off, that like I thought when you said ten prostitutes, I thought you, I thought you meant like he 
like over the course of his stay. Oh, he like one had time. one after another because I can't understand why he would have ten at once. But that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Was he making a rap video? Is that what he was doing? I don't know. Maybe a rap video on the sub. <laughs> but, what, uh, like, did you see uh, ten, like the rap videos with all like ten women around you for no reason? Right. That's what I'm thinking of. And the other guy, he had three women wandering around town. So all I could see is these two Navy guys in like a fur coat with a freaking Don Juan hat on and a gold chain. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck dude that's hilarious so he got so, fired huh he um he was relieved of his duties because they asked him and he admitted it so he was like yeah i'm not gonna lie to you i did it <laughs> so they they said they um i forgot they cited a reason basically they had lost trust in his ability to command so how do you take so how do you get home from work if you get laid <laughs> off and or you get fired and you're in the philippines, in the philippines i don't know I mean, and, if you could catch a ride on the sub, I would probably. Do they let you back on the sub? You think you just have to like stay in like the dishwasher quarters? Quarters. <laughs> Maybe if you brought the ten hookers, they would give you a ride. They probably would. <laughs> I, and, and when you said the ten hookers, I, I pictured like ten hookers on a submarine like that, and I was like, that sounds awesome. That sounds fantastic. Like what the hell? That that sounds like a fucking party right there. <laughs> Like there ain't nothing else to do on the dude. Could you go? Okay, literally, could you go on a submarine? Would you be able to handle that? Um, I don't know. I, I get claustrophobic a little bit, so that would bother me. Not not only are you claustrophobic, you're underwater. Yeah. Like deep underwater. Like that if anything goes wrong, me. you're dead. You're staying I, underwater. But I, I don't even want to go on a cruise because I don't like being places that I can't leave when I want. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you know how creepy. like families take trips and shit and everyone's like, well, we'll just take one car so we can ride together. Not me. I'm like, I'll follow you because I want to drive and I want to be able to get my ass home when I feel like it. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to have to make 10 extra stops because Aunt Diane is freaking needing some bows for her hair or some shit. Dude, that, yeah, that's awful. So wanted to bring up since we we haven't really talked about vaping stuff. We should probably we're almost a half hour into the show. We haven't <laughs> even talked about any vaping stuff yet. That's what we do in the vape hot tub. Because like the vape hot, we just got off work, we're relaxing in the hot tub. We're just talking about some things, you know, that happened in our day. You know, prostitutes, million dollar settlements. Now, right. a big topic going around the uh, community right now that a lot of people have been bringing up. I saw on a few shows is some of these new vape commercials. Now, I had not heard of a vape commercial, and I've been vaping now for almost three years, and I have not heard, never heard of a vape commercial. Right. And but now it seems like on the radio I'm hearing jewel commercials. I know there was a commercial for um, I think it was Wismic. Did you see the Wismic commercial? Yeah, I saw the Wismic one. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what the Wismic commercial was, um, it was ultimately shot. I, I was an American. Was it American? Um, I, I don't know. It it's, seemed like yeah. it was more like Latin America. Well, yeah, it was. They kind of grasped several cultures in the video um but it was like music playing but it, it was made with an american it was marketed for america it was made with americans and english and all that and the the opening scene rap. looks like it appears at like some sort of like park or some kind of outdoor it's um, at a skate park i think yeah like a skate park and it, it, it comes into a, a young lady who you really can't tell how old she is i mean she looks over 18 but basically it shows her vaping and then it shows people like, uh, do you remember the whole thing? It shows people doing graffiti and vaping. Um, yeah, and it, it shows guys tagging a wall. They're doing the graffiti. And then there's a rap video with a bunch of people there dancing. And they're just showing different. Um... Hang on. I don't know if Dermont meant to tag out Cal's Irons. I think that was a mistake. Cal's Iron. Oh, look. Cal's Irons was unhidden by Charlie. Cal's Irons was unhidden by... Okay, good, good. <laughs> Might have been an accident. Probably oh, was an Cal's, accident. Sorry, back. Cal's. He's back. So, yeah, so the, it's a Wismic active, so they're showing off the Bluetooth abilities. So yeah. they're acting like the Wismic is like the subwoofers of the party or the boom box on your shoulder in the 90s. Is that So that, like, that's what it's about. It's about the Wismic that like I saw on a couple shows that uh, was playing music. Yeah, the Wismic Active. So they're wearing they're wearing it like on a gold chain. They've got the Wismic Active, and they're listening to rap music while they tag walls. And 
it offends like skaters, hippies, um, people of different cultural backgrounds all at the same time. Um, if you're into that and it's just a funny commercial, if you're not into the offensive part. <clears throat> so here's my take on that. First off, it's, it's not a good commercial. I mean, it's pretty no, bad. It's, it's pretty commercial. bad. And for the American market, I would cut that apart immediately. Cause it's just not a good commercial. Right. But I think that as a community, I think you have, you know, there's, there's, we're so hypersensitive about anything that could be, you know, Oh my God. You know, regulators are going to come in. Look what they're doing. Look what they're doing. Well, these companies have to market. You know what I mean? And I guess I don't really know. It's hard to just market the quitting smoking type concept. So I guess I see, you know, this is a slippery slope for me to talk about, really, because, it, it, you know, you don't want to I don't want to piss anybody off here. But I do think that these companies have the right to market their product any way they want to. You know what I right. mean? <clears throat> And I think as long as they're not showing children vaping, you know, I mean, the person in the video was arguably, I get it. It's arguably she could be, you know, she could have been anywhere from like 20 to 27. Right. And it, it looks like it's geared towards younger people and um, older people look at skateboarding like, you know, kids, these days. they don't realize that adults are skateboarding. But to, I mean, there's a fine line. Do you want to have young people who are a big demographic of the um, smoking market? We want to convert to vapors being represented in a commercial or do you want everyone to sit around looking like ST vapes? And only Uncle Phil age range and above in your commercial. I'm pretty much close to Uncle Phil to uh, <laughs> ST vapes age. So I'd, I'd be careful with that comment there, Charlie. You look a little older than him. But. Yeah, I was gonna say. First off, ST will will fuck you up. <laughs> oh, I love dude. ST. ST's my boy. So I be careful. Be careful, Carmel. <laughs> no, I made that comment because he made the same comment in um in one of his shows. He was like, "Well, you know, what do we want?" vaping to be representative of and we have to capture everyone without appealing to children that's the tough part yeah i don't see i mean i get it that it is maybe okay i i will give somebody saying maybe it's in poor taste maybe i you know showing people doing graffiti and vaping you know it's kind of stupid we've got it's just a bad it's just not a good commercial it's a stupid commercial it's that's the problem that's the only problem i have with it it's yeah. just not a good i would not buy anything that advertised like right that. from a business and marketing approach it's it's a horrible commercial yeah. but i think they have the right to make the commercial if they want to of I do course too. there's laws on where they can air it and that kind of thing but we've got much much bigger problems to worry about yeah, you know, they talk about that new bill that they have coming out that, uh, what is it, the H2? I want to say it was HR 239. but 239, I, I believe. Yeah, it's not, that sounds right. You know, and it, I, I get it. And, you know, I, I'm all for advocating and trying to get everything done that we possibly can to save this industry. Um, right. And, and anything that we do, you know, is going to be held under a microscope. But, you know, a lot of it hasn't been, you know, the, the things that uh, – a lot of it hasn't been thrown in our face. So I don't know right. where that's all going to play out moving forward in the next. Uh... And and there was another commercial that, that I heard about. And to me, it just sounds even dumber than the Wismic Active commercial. Was it the break-in commercial? Yeah. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> it's absolutely awful. It's literally, Charlie, the production value on it is something that like you and I would do. It, it, the plot line is just sounds retarded. It's to me. yeah. It's so, and, and again, it doesn't appear to be American. Like I think it's, it's not, I don't think it was produced in America. It could have been, but it didn't, it didn't give me that feel. It gave me more feel of like what you would see in like a Latin American country, like that style commercial. Yeah, that would make more, more sense. And it, the, I know, like, in Asia, their commercials all look silly to us, but it, it works well for them. So I understand different countries having different commercials, but yeah, Sounds like a horrible commercial as far as a business and selling standpoint. Uh, dude, it basically, so I kind of explain it. it it's um, it's a young lady, like, goes into a vape shop, obviously of age. Like, there's no, like, I didn't watch that commercial and any bells go off that this is some kid going in trying to buy a vape. But uh, okay. it's like a, and then she talks to the, the guy selling them and she, she can't afford the mod. You know, she really wants this mod. She can't afford it. I can't remember what mod it is. But, um, you know, it's one of the kit mods, you know, kind of flashy, you know, something that somebody, you know, that somebody in, you know, a Wait. younger generation so would a, like. So part of their commercial to market to people is showing that their product is too expensive for the person on TV. Yeah. And wow. so it, that's on not like. Video? Not on TV. I'm sorry. On the video. 
Yeah, that so, that right there is mark mark marketing one hundred and one day two. <laughs> right. Don't do that. Okay, so, so the chick goes in and can't afford it. Continue. She can't afford it, so she comes back later that night, and she I, I believe she picks the lock or breaks in and, and takes the mod, and then she goes out <laughs> and has a great time. Now she has this mod. So Sex she goes back and steals it. She goes back and breaks in and steals the mod that she wanted from the vape store. Okay, so where is the the police officer? Is what I knew about. So does she get arrested? I don't remember the end. I, I don't. I, I rarely watch the entire thing, or maybe I was watching it and I just stopped paying attention to it. But I, I, I she may get arrested. I don't remember. I really don't I'm remember. Pretty sure that she gets arrested and the, and the cop is vaping in the commercial. That's one of the things people were upset about. At least me reading the, the you know the forums and stuff. That the cop was. They were mad. The cop. They were mad. The cop. The, that the cop was vaping. Apparently, Why? which I guess he took the vape from a criminal and discovered vaping. It sounds great. It sounds like the best part of the commercial, but I haven't seen That's it. Like one of the benefits of being a cop is like, when yeah, you find something, you can just take it. It's not going to be booked in evidence. <laughs> yeah. It's like, take it with you. You know? Confiscate it <laughs> for safety. That's like one of the that's one of the perks of being a cop. What are you talking about? Now, I, it, it, to me again, to do that, Scott. You know, I think unless you do, you know, I think in, in this environment right now, that unless you do a commercial that is basically like, "Hey, I'm 45 years old and I smoked for 25 years and I quit smoking using this," right. that's fantastic and and I feel better. Which you know, quite frankly, testimonials like that are great advertising, but you can only yeah. handle so much of them and. You know, there is there is part of smokers that are young smokers that it's a great thing for them to switch to vaping as an alternative to smoking. Yep. That's I mean, exactly my right. son's a great example. Like, he was starting to smoke. I got him a vape. He vaped for a little bit, and then he quit altogether. Right. You know what I mean? And that's like, you know, I could not be happier. And his girlfriend was the same way. Smoked, yes. and then I got her a vape, and she's, you stopped, stopped smoking, started vaping, and quit altogether. That's so, I mean, yeah. Yeah. there is a market for that. <laughs> so I get it. You know what I mean? But um, I think you're going to have to deal with, you're going to have to deal with some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of a backlash right. anytime you're and not I showing something have clearly. I all the answers because how do you show a 19, for, I mean, without a 19 year old having like 19 tattooed on their forehead yeah. while they're doing commercial how do you have them not look like they're 75 or 17 kind of a thing so it's yeah tough. i mean i don't it, know the answer but that's the problem to me some you could be a little more clear cut but just by the activities that people are doing but you've got to you've got to reach people where they are yeah. just like any other harm reduction <laughs> and i think but i i do think that we need to you know as a community we need to be a little bit more yeah uh, I, you know, I, I think we need sure. to be careful, but at the same time, we need to understand that these companies are trying to make money. You know what I mean? And they're yeah. trying to advertise and, and, and get it out there. Become, so, in my opinion, we can't become like our enemy in that we're offended by everything. Yeah, and everything's offensive, kind of a thing. Um, and we really need to pay attention to the stuff that matters. Yeah. And the Wismic Active commercial, while it doesn't represent um, our group of vape enthusiasts. I don't think it's nearly as bad as some of the um, labels that are on juice bottles that are going to get held up in front of Congress and that kind of thing. So. Yeah, there's some that are ridiculous. Right. Some are ridiculous. So speaking of break-ins, we had something happen today in the community. Um, did you see the video this morning from – well, it was this morning over here from uh, Vaping with Vic? Um, no, I, I heard what happened. I've literally been working since I got up this morning at five o'clock and not stopped till now. So I didn't get to watch the video, but I saw what happened. The, so the, for those who don't know vaping with Vic, and I'm sure you're all aware vaping with Vic is a, a reviewer who's out of the United Kingdom. Um, and he is, uh, he, he had a break in at his studio. Now he had a studio separate from his, um, his home office, I, I, I believe. And he, uh, apparently somebody broke in and just basically wiped him out, wiped no. him out. Yeah, he had like, I mean, you know, he had all he had all his um, giveaway stuff there because he does giveaways. Yeah. He had all his giveaway stuff there. He had um, so his personal collection there. He had studio equipment, cameras, computers, all that. And yeah, apparently did they get somebody his electronics because I knew they got his vape equipment. Did they get his cameras and yeah, stuff? Yeah, they got everything. 
because his video today said that he, you know, he doesn't have anything to to, vi to make videos for, and he doesn't have anything to make videos with. So they basically robbed him completely. There's a couple interesting things he said, and he showed something I thought was kind of telling that he had a picture of his background, the background that he uses for his um. He doesn't use a green like a blank green screen for his background, surprisingly. Okay, that's what nobody could steal anything from here. <laughs> that's just a blank green screen right. i can't run <laughs> i'm playing but anyway he had a, his background he had some vape material and then some other things uh to kind of add to the ambiance of, the, of his videos and right. they were very particular about the mods that they took which i th i mean that's a huge tell right there that the people who took the stuff knew what they were looking for and took specific mods from him the yeah. more expensive yeah. mods. that is that's very telling it's very telling and it, that pisses me off more than the thieves because you know it's someone from the vape community who knows the value in that stuff yeah and somebody who had watched his video been like i want that mod and i want that mod that's exactly right yeah. and he's uh, i recall that he was also threatened um a few years ago when there or last year when there was some vape drama um and and people threatened him and that's just a line that should never be crossed when you're going to reach out and touch someone or their property. And it pisses me off more now that you've told me. And I, I remember seeing it in the headlines because when I woke up, it was on Instagram on my notification. That's one of us. That's someone from the vape community, obviously not one of us, but right. it's one that knew what the stuff was. That means they're, they're a vapor. It it's either a vapor or somebody who worked around who was who watched vape videos or, or at least understood understands the market. Right. I mean, more than likely, you can kind of put two and two together and think it's somebody that actually, you know. And, and I don't know. I don't think it's related to any of the vape drama that, stuff. I, that that's a no, huge. I don't. I don't either. But I think it crosses a line. And in my opinion, it would be scary as fuck for me and my family for someone to reach out, being a vapor, and do something to our physical property. Oh, dude. Have you ever had a break-in? Yeah. I, I've never had my house broken into, but I've had things stolen. I've had my property broken into and my things stolen. It's like the biggest disrespect. Like, it's awful, man. I had my house. So I the, the place I lived in before I lived here, um, this would be back in like 2014. I had my house broken into twice in four that's, months. That's like pretty recent. I mean, that's not that long ago. No. It's not like 30 no. years ago. It had been 2014. So actually, it was 2014. I, they broke in. So we moved into this new neighborhood, and it was a really nice neighborhood when we were looking at it. And we needed to be closer to a family member that was sick. So we moved. We moved locations. We moved about an hour away from where we originally were, because um, where I where I live now is where I lived before. And then I moved to another place to be closer to some family. And uh, we found a house, a nice neighborhood. We looked for a while, found a neighborhood, whatever. And uh, we were there literally for about a month and a half, and we got broken into. And they broke in during the day, and they took uh, – we could tell it was kids. And the reason being, I had, like, a PlayStation. My son had a PlayStation 4. We had, like, an Xbox. We had some stereo equipment, things like that around the house. That's all they took was that stuff. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it was just amateurs that didn't take – It was kids who saw value in video games and musical stuff. But the other thing they got is they got one of my firearms – and, like, I have a couple firearms, you know, for house. I mean, you know, right. I, I registered, whatever, you know, I have some firearms. And um, they took one of my firearms, too. So it was kind of scary. Now, we didn't have any clue, you know. And, and you come home from work. It was really weird. My wife, Veronica, came home from work. And she noticed that the back door was open. And then as soon as she got in the house, the cops showed up. And apparently, when she got home, they were either leaving or they had just left. Like, basically wow. just missed them, which is a whole thing. Like, if she would have walked in on him doing it, what could have happened? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so they had a firearm at that point. Yeah. Right. And, they ha and they had my firearm, right? right. So that's a pretty fucking scary scary thing to think about. But yeah. uh, the cops showed up, like, right after that, just missed them. One of my neighbors had saw them and called the cops. The cops showed up just after, like, Veronica got home. The cops were, like, pulling in the driveway. So she calls me in a panic. I go home. We look at everything. House is messed up. Broke the back door. They kicked the back door in. That's how they got in. And, uh, you know, police report, took fingerprints, did all that, you know. And you kind of like, eh, you know, they're not going to find anybody who did it. But, you know, they, like, did all the CSI stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Well, 
Charlie, you're not gonna believe this. So that would have been October. Right, so we got a, we got an alarm system put in the house. We turned a you know a bunch of motion detectors, all that crap, all through the house. And right. back then in January of the next year, 2015, we got hit again. And this time they got in. Nobody was home, and they were able to go through the house and get everything they wanted. Like I had some stuff that my father had given me. I had some stuff that my grandfather had given me. Stuff that I was holding on to, um, that's, that that's of awesome. value to me. Right. You know, and they took all that. Uh, they took more firearms. They took like a bunch. They just they basically went through with, you know, and took whatever they wanted. And they had plenty of time. Like they took two giant suitcases of stuff out of my house because my suitcases yeah. were gone. Yeah. So, you know, like that feeling of being violated, like I can't explain to you the fury like I felt like I really want to kill yeah. somebody. Yeah. I was like the first time it happened, I was like, ah, shit happens. You know, I. I've been broken into it while I was in college a couple times and like you feel violated, but I was like, I can deal with it. You know, it's no big deal. You know, and I really, honestly, I, I didn't get like that upset the second time, dude, I was ready to kill somebody. I was like, this is yeah. absolutely ridiculous. That's how I was too. And, I, uh, and yeah. ultimately, so ultimately what happened was they found out who did it and it was four kids from the neighborhood and they were basically going down house after house. They had yeah. on my street and like within those like six months span, like seven houses had got hit and a couple yeah. houses had got hit twice. I was one of the ones that got hit twice. And you know, the thing that infuriated me the most out of all that is they were 17, 16 and 17 year old kids. And the position that somebody puts you in when they do that is they put me in a situation where if I would have been in the home and they would have came in, I would have ended up killing a 17 year old yeah. child. That's right. And that's what pissed me off more than anything. Because yeah. if somebody comes in your house, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer you have to defend your house. Yeah. You know I mean, especially I have, I have my son there and my wife. And it's my responsibility right. to defend them if somebody comes in my house. Right. And you're putting me now way. into a position where I've got to shoot you. Yeah. Oh, God. And you just think, how fucking stupid. And, you know, I later hear about these kids who did it. And two of them have already been killed. And two of them are, the other two are in prison. There's four of them. So you think about, like, what in God's name were these kids thinking? And you know what I mean? It's just absolutely yeah. awful, dude. It's absolutely was, awful. Yeah. I've been, and I've actually, it's happened several times. One time my car went, uh, my car was parked outside the house, my truck. And I had a, uh, like a 30 inch commute, uh, computer monitor in the back seat. And I came out to leave to go to work in my truck. And I noticed like my center console that I never opened was open. And my glove compartment was open, and I was like, what the hell? There was, like, a few papers, and I was like, somebody's been in here. I didn't leave this open. And then I got to work and realized that computer monitor had been on my back seat. And um, they were hitting one house after the other going through cars, and they ended up stealing. The way they got caught was they stole a guy's GPS watch. Oh. And, um, he could see on the computer where the watch went and the cops got there. They didn't find my stuff, but they found a lot of stuff there where the, and it was, um, kids with adults. The adults were dropping the kids off at the end of the block and letting them gather all the stuff and pile it on the sidewalk and then coming back and picking them up at like four o'clock in the morning and loading shut them. up. Yeah. <laughs> so they were just blatantly going out, grabbing stuff, putting it on the end of the sidewalk and then coming back and getting it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, wow, yeah, it's man, so stuff. brash, it's kind of a rural area, but yeah, they were just leaving the stuff out. And, it, um, it turned out when, it, when people started talking on Facebook, people had found like TVs hidden in their bushes that they couldn't explain. And it all turned out to be that little ring of criminals. You know, and, and again, so Tracy said something in here, just said young and stupid. And, you know, talking about the kids think they're going to live forever, you know, and, and Tracy, here's the thing about it is I have four kids, okay? And I just think of, you know, how stupid, like how would you like to have to go to that parent and be like, hey, I'm sorry I shot your son? Like how yeah. do you, you know what I mean? And the parent, you know, obviously, I don't know, you know, I would understand, and part of me would understand, you know, right. but it's still your son. Your son's gone regardless. You know what I mean? And now you're putting me in a, in a position where it's like, you know, yeah. I'm going to kill somebody's kid. Are you fucking kidding me? Like yeah. I, nobody, I don't want to live with that. I don't want to live no. with that. I did that to yeah. some family. Yeah. You know what I mean? For, we are changed forever when that happens. And it's like, you know, but the thing about it is when you're scared, right? 
when you're scared, you'll do, you know, people say I'll do anything for love or I'll do anything because I hate somebody. No, when you're, when you're scared, you'll do fucking anything. Yeah. Like oh, fear yeah. will, fear's I, a motherfucker. Yeah. It will make you and, do some crazy irrational shit. Right. And when I was young, I always, I used to give my mom a hard time because in the, if someone came to the door in the middle of the night, she opened it with, with a pistol in their face. And we had a few relatives, you know, that showed up at late at night that we didn't know were coming in town, that kind of thing. And she didn't shoot them or anything. She greeted them with a gun though. Why are you knocking on my door in the middle of the night? Well, now that like I have a family and Jennifer has kids and stuff, I, I totally get it. And I'm the same way. I mean, I mean, you come in my house in the middle of the night with my family here and it's me or you, you're going to be carried out of here in a body bag. Yeah, man. I mean, I hate to say it, but I, I'm a fir- I, I'm the same way. Like, I'm not going to allow somebody to come into my house and I'm not going to ask questions. Why are you here? No, no. You I'm going to no. tell you I have a gun and then I'm going to shoot you. Yeah, When you've come in this door, yeah, you've crossed that line. Talking Absolutely. To so, you know, just reeling re- re- back to Vic, I hope everything, you know, man, I, I, you know, I sent him an email like, Hey, anything I can do to help you, man, I will. I don't yeah, really have really, a lot of stuff for, I could do, but let's certainly for try. everyone watching, just keep an eye out. Uh, and I may try to contact Vic to see what we can do to um, put the stuff out front uh, in front of people, because some of this stuff is going to turn up in the vape community. Yeah, and so people just need to keep an eye out and see what you can do. Look for you stuff in the in the groups. Just if you happen to notice it, once you've seen it, if you happen to notice the unique stuff, let Vic know. Yeah, and I think we need to spread it. Maybe do something yeah. from the Patreon. We'll see if we can do something a little bit. We'll talk about it. I'll bring it up. We need to do something to get the bastards, in my opinion. Well, that's the thing is they'll they'll figure out who did it. Yeah, I'm pretty confident they'll figure out who did it. The law enforcement, they don't miss much anymore, man. It's hard to get away with shit, I'm sure. So, And regardless of um, what you think of any reviewer, this is something that yeah. affects the vaping community as a whole, and you, you need to take part and do what you can. Yeah, that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, it has nothing to do with if you like the person or not. Like their reviews, right. no, that, that's that's, that's 100% beside the point. <laughs> doesn't Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's us, the coolest guys in the world, or two yeah. biggest assholes in the world, or whoever gets their shit stolen. we got to stand up for our fellow vapors. Yeah, if it happens, nobody's going to steal anything from the hot tub. <laughs> hot, tub hot tub. They would get oh. that. That's, that's, that's punishable by death. Steal yeah. something from the vape hot tub. Armed in the hot tub, that's right. <laughs> Hey, so before we get out of here, we got about five minutes left. Let me see the, uh, can I see the deck on that Arden? Yeah. You just took a hit off of it. Hopefully it don't burn you. So luckily I um, checked it out because it's, it's close to dry, which is perfect. But the airflow, um, if you can see the airflow goes up at an angle. Yeah. And three holes, but this is the deck. Um, it's hard with a uh so it's basically two post yeah it's got two really big holes those are big ass posts man yeah there's two really big holes and it's a it's a clamp like a goon style but it's actually um and there's no way that you can see it on camera but so first um, time I've seen the deck on that. I wonder what that looks it's like basically the the top the top half of the post and the bottom half of the posts as you clamp, as you trap the wire and screw the clamps down, it grabs your wire. So you've got huge holes there. You can do anything you want as far as builds with. And that gives you the option with the running series builds. Yeah. But you could also it's run 20, just like a regular build 20, in that as well. Would it would fit fine? Yeah, it's a um, a twenty seven millimeter RDA, so it it's a big hoss. Um, it's a uh, hybrid for the dreamer, but it comes with a 510 connection. So you just screw it on the bottom of the deck and it's a normal RDA. Nice, man. You'll have to check that out. I think I may go ahead and get one for the, uh, to do a review on in February. Yeah, I got, it's, it's a nice one. I had problems with it at first. Um, the first night that I put it together, it was late at night and I was using different cotton and I, I just wasn't getting that great of flavor. I got frustrated with it. Um, but I had a hot spot in my coils. I fixed it the next, the next day I fooled with it. I fixed it and it just has amazing flavor. That's like, awesome, you wouldn't man. think you could get flavor like this from a 27 millimeter on a stack. Let me see the outside of it. Cause I see where the airflow comes in. Is the airflow. So it's bottom airflow. Yes. Oh, it's got the honeycomb, uh, sort of honeycomb airflow. That's my, and that's my shit right it. there. Yeah. It's got that. So it's got these three holes and a little cavity. So basically no matter where you put the airflow slots, 
they go straight to the coil, no matter how much opened or closed it is. So it's not like some RDAs where as you close off the airflow, you're changing where the air gets to the coils. Yeah. Because it's got this cavity that keeps it centered. So opened or closed, it gets to the center of your coil. That's a one-piece top cap? Uh, well, the drip tip is an 810. Uh, but but yeah. I mean the top cap, there isn't a, there isn't yeah. the, the barrel and top cap are together there. Right. You don't adjust right. the airflow that way. Right. It's just the whole top cap over that cavity in the deck. <clears throat> so the air comes in the side of the deck and goes up to the coil. So anybody who watched the, uh, the goat RDA review yesterday, um, just so you know, I'm still vaping it. Like I haven't taken it off I, I, and I've got the 0.19 coil in it. And I'm enjoying it, man. I'm enjoying the goat RDA and, and you know, I, I'm, I, it's crazy to say that, but I really am. I'm getting That's a really, good. really nice vape off of it. Yeah. I, th I think it's, it's great for the market. It's intended for, and I think it's going to be, um, a good thing for the RDA market in general. I think it's going to help bring squonking to a lot of people that wouldn't have tried anything after a sub owned tank. Otherwise. Absolutely. That that's my hope. So I'm going to be, I'm wick this one up probably tomorrow. Maybe I'll do that before the, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the bonds of one and a half. Um, the really interesting, uh, kind of similar post to what you have there in the Arden. I haven't really looked at it too much. I haven't even opened the package yet. It's still in the plastic. I'll, um, our discord and Patreon, I'll put some better pictures up of the clamps so you can see how the posts work. That'd be awesome, man. Awesome. 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 All right, dude, we are almost out of time. You want to say, uh, anything before we take off, Charlie? Uh, thanks everyone for sticking with us. Uh, keep an eye out on the vaping with Vic stuff. Um, I think it's horrible that anyone with vaping knowledge would do that to someone in the vape community. Absolutely. And that's it. Back to you, Scott. Hey, all right, man. Well, Hey, thanks everybody for joining today. Next week on the vape hot tub, we're going to have a very special guest, Mrs. Brittany, uh, vape wife will be here. Uh, so we will have that. I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's gonna be fun. She's a lot of fun. So I think it's gonna, we're going to have a really, really fun time. And, uh, I'm absolutely looking forward to that, man. So awesome. we will have that next week, uh, tomorrow on the vape at five, we have rigged Friday. Now we have a couple new giveaways. Well, one new giveaway. We do have coil chiefs giveaway. So you're going to win three sets of coils, but remember you got to go to his Instagram page and you have to repost a picture from his Instagram page with the hashtag black cat fam to enter. The link is below to his Instagram page. So if you haven't done that, go do that now. Show some support to him. Make yeah. sure you also put at coil chief on there too, to support him. Um, I know a lot of people have, have like shut up. Uh, Lady Louisiana made like a, a montage of his, of his stuff. And oh, like posted awesome. fucking, yeah. Oh, one awesome, more man. quick thing. Everyone in chat, I've been watching you guys. Um, Y'all are like family. I plan to get to chat today and uh, just shoot the shit with you guys. I apologize that the show went quick. So thanks to everyone in chat. You guys are really what makes this show a family. So I appreciate you all. Absolutely, man. We have the best, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Black Cat fam is awesome. We've got a hell of a family. We That's do, right. man. We have, like, yeah. the, I'm telling you, like, it, you know, if you want uh, so – one thing I'll mention is we have the Patreon. If you want to join the Patreon, it's five bucks a month. Uh, link is below. I mean, we really are like, it, it's amazing. Yeah. I mean, really, really good people in there. We have a lot of ways that we socialize and hang out all day. So I really encourage you to do it if you haven't. Um, and if you can't, you know, no big deal. You're still part of the family. It's just, you know, if you want to do that and get a little bit more intricate into the family, that would be fantastic. Now, and the builder's knowledge in there and the fact yeah. that you get coils as a patron is freaking amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I try to do it. Like I, I'm not good at taking money from people. So it's like, for me, it's like, I try to like make it worth it. If that makes yeah. it, you know, and yeah. Oh, I also got some, so I'm going to be putting together some new shirts with the black on black, which I'll be having for you guys pretty out. soon. I like it. It's, I think it's going to be pretty sweet. We got the, uh, we're, we got some stuff we're going to oh. test out this weekend. Um, and then I got my sweatshirts and everything going out, which are going to be pretty awesome. So, Oh, next yeah. week, I'm going to have to show off my sweatshirts, man. Veronica did a hell of a job. Didn't so. she, though? She's amazing, dude. She is freaking amazing. I mean, she's so handy with things. It's unbelievable. I mean, the quality of them are fantastic. Anyone uh, in the um, that, that's in the Patreon, the uh, hoodies that Veronica did um, for the women with the sparkly glitter letters are freaking amazing. Yeah. I'll throw some pictures up in Discord, but they're awesome. It's hard. Steve, I'll, I'll shoot you the info, but the post is in Patreon. 
<laughs> yeah, we made one for uh, Celine wanted one, and we literally it took us like three tries to get. We couldn't get it. Like it depends on the material, the vinyl that you use. Some of it works, and some of it doesn't. Yeah, I don't have Jennifer's. I have mine right here. Yeah, there's yours. But Jennifer's is, is sparkly and purple, and it's freaking. Yeah, we got that one to work. That material worked really well. Yeah, we it get came the out awesome. Store. So I'll I'll show it off next week. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, oh, also tomorrow. So we have Rick Friday. We have twenty five dollars gift certificate to the greatest e liquid on the face of this earth, Adore e liquid. Which of course I'm vaping right now. Look at the steep on that. Look how beautiful that is. That's blueberry something. Freaking amazing. And yeah. it tastes great in this goat. It tastes great. <laughs> Top side goat combination is fucking all. awesome. So yeah. uh, we got twenty five dollars <laughs> gift certificate to Adore e liquid. We have uh, two sixty mil, two thirty mils of chain vapes. And for tomorrow, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to have two uh, 30 mils of Paradigm's uh, Vanilla Wafers e-liquid, which is really, really good. If you haven't tried it, I've been vaping it the oh, uh, last couple of weeks. Nella Killa. Nella Killa. Yeah. yeah. The Nella Man. Killer. So we're going to have two yeah. 30 mils of that as well for giveaway tomorrow, which I'm really excited about that for you guys to get that out to you. We're going to have that for a couple of weeks, not long term, but for a couple of weeks. That's awesome. Um, they said they're going to do that for us. So I'll put that out there. You guys got to go check them out as well. That's so amazing. anyway, appreciate it. It's going to be hard for me to piff it if I win, but I will. I don't Dude, it. the Nilla Kill is really good. Yeah, Parrot yeah. Diggum makes some amazing juice too. So Absolutely, awesome. man. They do a good, they do a fantastic job. And I'm telling you, all the, it's like the, the people who have sponsored and, and donated to the channel, just like, you know, Shy Tots, Adore, obviously Adore, Miss Don, who I love to death. Yeah, Thinking of you, Don, right now. Stand up 3D. I love you to death. Stand up 3D, Chain Vapes, and then Paradigm giving us uh, for a couple giveaways. I Just absolutely awesome of them to do that. It's super, super cool of them. Just for support for the community is all it is. You know, I don't really ask for anything for me. It's just right. stuff that's going to go directly out to you guys. So um, absolutely fantastic. All right, guys, thank you for joining. We will see you tomorrow on the Vape at 5. Not with Charlie. No Charlie tomorrow. But we will be back next week. Next I'll be Friday. In chat. What's that? I'll be in chat. All right. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. See you guys tomorrow. The Vapor Five. You guys have a great night. If you're in recovery, stay strong. I promise I will too. See you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Good show, man. Good show. Yes, that went well. Everything worked. Yeah.